the action does start on Phil. King 10, offsuit. Raises to 800. I'm out of here. Loose cannon folds. Oh, he just made it 8? What is Daniel looking at? Six deuce suited? This isn't all that uncommon of a hand for Daniel to limp in with. There has been a raise already. How about a re-raise to 3,600? Forget the loose cannon. Daniel's now trying to isolate Phil Helmuth. Doyle pocket jacks. Don't think he was counting on Doyle waking up with such a big hand. Who lost the last part? <laughs> Well, Doyle would typically be the one to three bet in this spot with two jacks, but since Daniel did it for him, he just calls. That gets Phil Locke and Tony G out of the hand, and now action back on Helmuth. Makes the call. Daniel's repping a big hand before the flop. Let's see if Doyle coming along for the ride causes him to change his game plan at all. So three players to the flop. Five, seven, queen. Seven. It misses everyone. Helmuth checks. That's right, so that means Doyle's still in the lead with two jacks. Negreanu checks. Now you expect Daniel to try to continue his pre-flop ruse, but I think Doyle's presence in the hand has thrown him off a bit. It checked around, a four of spades on the turn. No help to anyone. Daniel has picked up a draw now. He has an up and down straight draw. Phil Helmuth chips in hand. Finally feels like it's safe to maybe take a stab here. That's 7,000. Well, if Phil doesn't have anything. He's now leading out into a guy who three bet and another guy who called a three bet. So this bluff from Helmuth actually carries a lot of weight. It's not just a snap call for Daniel with an open-ended straight draw. Daniel does make the call. Now with Daniel and Phil raising and re-raising and betting into each other, it's going to be very tough for Doyle to know he has the best hand. Gets rid of the best hand. So it's Daniel and Helmuth off to the river, which is a deuce of spades. Daniel hits bottom pair. Not only bottom pair for the board, bottom pair for the entire deck. Helmuth has nothing, but he can still maybe win this pot with the right size bet. Didn't Daniel say bluffs are good for the game a little earlier? Only if you show him. 6,000. Bet of 6,000 by Phil Helmuth. This is a very small bet compared to the size of the rest of the pot. It's also smaller than the bet he just made on the turn. Let's see if Daniel can figure it out. Just don't reach for a bunch of those great chips. Why? You might just <laughs> shove it on me. Phil insinuating he'll make a snap call. <laughs> that orange ship is 25K. A lot of power in that little stack. Negranu makes it 46,000. Daniels correctly read Phil is weak and stuck in a huge bet with only a pair of deuces. Speech, speech time. It's gotta come. Uh, he might have like six, nine offsuit. It's Daniel. Good bet. And Phil lays it down. Finally got there. It took a while, but I had you. He <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. Look at that. That's sick. So the game has a very different dynamic when you got someone like Phil Helmuth in the game because he's going to start limping a lot more than what's typical in a six-handed game. Now, we also had a straddle going on in this game, and he decided to mid up and, and not straddle, but instead he min-raced 800 from first position. I decided to re-raise him with six deuce of clubs. And then my plan kind of got foiled because Phil Brunson called him the button. And I know he's not calling with garbage. Phil Helmuth also calls. The three of us see a flop. Flop's queen, seven, five. Check it. Phil checks, and I, I start thinking about whether or not it's worth it to try to steal this pot. But I think, you know, Doyle's got such a strong hand that it's too dangerous. So I decided to just give up completely. I just check. And Doyle, he thought for a bit, but he checked. Now the turn comes a four, but it's also a spade. Backdoor flush draw. And Phil Helmuth bets 
7,000. And now I'm thinking, okay, he could be doing this with a hand like 2.8s, 2.9s, 2.10s. With the right card on the river, I could bluff him. Plus, I have a straight draw now. So I decided to call and reevaluate in the river. And Doyle, he just he folded on the button, so I was like, Phew, got through him. Now the river is a deuce of spades. So it's kind of a weird card, because the flush got there, so I could represent that. But I also made a pair. So if he has nothing, I can beat him. But he bets 6,000. I'm already like, okay, he doesn't have a flush. I've seen Phil help me make these bets a lot, and more often than not, it's, it's usually not the nuts. Just don't reach for a bunch of those great chips. So I decide, I raise it. Like 40,000, he just instantly folded. Good bet. It really just came down to me knowing that his bet size on the river just screamed of a very weak, weak attempt at a bluff. So I'm like, no, nah, not on my watch. Just in case my deuces weren't good, I had to raise it and get him off maybe if he had a pair of sevens or something stupid like that.